Hi everyone. In this chapter, we will cover evaluating model performance. So, as we have discussed in class, that there are two things that we are trying to predict. We are predicting a continuous target variable or an outcome variable, or we are trying to predict a classified or a class outcome variable which is a categorical variable so that's the difference between classification and predictive performance so when we say classification we are referring to an outcome variable that is categorical variable or a binary variable such as readmission versus not readmission readmission uh, or we are trying to predict if a person is going to be responding to a promotion versus not responding to a promotion material for example in the mail when you receive uh, recruitment you know to participate in, a, in a, a trial for example are you going to be a responder versus non-responder that's uh, one example of classification and the other the as for predictive uh, performance in other so that was the classification performance so for predictive performance we are referring to a continuous outcome variable for example what is the predictive or the predicted salary of a certain person uh, so in that case salary is continuous so we can predict it so that's what we mean here by prediction versus classification uh, just kind of to clarify that so now let's go on and look at let's start first by looking at the classification prediction performance or classification performance let's call it in this example we have on the top line or the top row is the actual value of uh, class classes so we have blue classes and we have two red classes and the total we have 10 here so when we ran a prediction model we had two we ended up with two models model one and model two so in model one as you can see the prediction or the classification is that all of them are blue in this case there is a misclassification of two so let's look at here based on the actual data this particular case was misclassified in model one and this particular case was misclassified in model one so in the second model on the other hand we our model misclassified this this particular case but it got this one correct this one is not correct so I'm comparing it to the original or the actual so this one was not correct and this one was correct this one was not correct so now you can see that uh, and also I provided you here with kind of an image how it looks like so in this case here for model one we had 80% accurate prediction or, or classification so the accuracy is 80% because we got eight correct and only two wrong misclassified as for recall means for the red ones we were not able to identify them that in this case our recall for the red ones or that class red was zero percent recall on the other hand the second model as you can see here we were able to correctly classify seven so all those blue ones and those two red ones were classified correctly so those are seven accurate so we were uh, 70 percent accurate in classifying uh, cases as for recall as you can see here we were able to recall or identify the red ones correctly so we had 100 percent recall so you get the idea this is how we we evaluate the performance of classification we look at how deviant it is from the actual data 
So why do we need to evaluate? As we mentioned in our project, we will need to have, or uh, for a classification or for a prediction model, we usually have several algorithms that we can use. And there are several uh, ways and methods and multiple choices that we can use in order to evaluate classification or a prediction model. Um, as you know that for our purpose for our project we will have at least three or four prediction models or classification models in our case and then we will evaluate the performance of those three or four and we will select the best performing model from all of them so that's why it is very important to evaluate because we might end up with more than one model and we want to select the best model so in order to evaluate classification we need to calculate the misclassification error that's exactly like what i illustrated in that graph earlier here Mis misclassification error so what we mean by an error is when we classify a record as belonging to a certain class while it doesn't really uh it really belongs to another class so that class what can be readmission so let's say we classified all of them to be as belonging to readmission while there were two that were actually not readmitted so in this case we have two misclassification error so the error rate is the percentage of misclassified errors out of the total records in the validation data basically we are just uh, calculating the percentage of errors versus uh, of misclassified versus correctly classified so there is um, a famous a box or a table that we will always see and use to uh, measure and evaluate the performance of a classification and this this table is automatically produced for us in Excel Miner or any other product that we are using for uh, analytics and this table is called classification confusion matrix so it provides you with those numbers and this is basically tells us how good or bad our model is performing so let's understand how we can read this confusion or classification matrix so this is the actual so the this this area here refers to the actual class so the, this is the actual data for us we are measuring and we are evaluating the predicted class so we are the predicted class is in the in the columns so in this table we can see that let's say one is readmitted zero not readmitted so the interesting the the class that we are interested in is readmitted readmission so in our model predicted class we were able to predict correctly 201 cases so that's one as readmitted so it matches the actual and it is also predicted in our model to be 201 on the other hand our prediction model predicted that 25 will be readmitted but the actual data shows that those 25 are not readmitted so that is this is the 25 here are misclassified as readmitted or as class one but they are not class one in actuality so you got the idea here so 25 are misclassified this 201 they are classified correctly or predicted correctly as belonging to class one on the other hand if we look at class zero we predicted that class zero to have 2689 so we correctly 
we are able to classify this number of cases as belonging to class 0 and in actual actuality they are belonging to class 0. On the other hand we were we misclassified 85 cases as being belonging to class 0 while in actuality they are belonging to class 1. So in, in other words we can say that misclassified numbers of cases 25 and 85 and this diagonal here 201 because they are in the cross point between 1 and 1 those are classified correctly as 1 and this is the cross point between 0 and 0 those are the correct classification of belonging to class 0 so those are classifi classified correctly those the other diagonal those are the misclassification so 1 and 0 those are misclassified 0 and 1 those are also misclassified so now we can just give them some names so in other words kind of to read them as it is in the sentences here 201 cases were correctly classified as one so this is right correctly now looking at this one 25 cases were misclassified as one so they were misclassified as one or I can say 25 were incorrectly classified as one so this is here the same thing here we can read this one 85 so 85 cases were incorrectly classified as zero so this one 85 so we can say 85 where cases were incorrectly incorrectly classified as zeros right and then we can say we can read those two those two guys here we can say 26089 cases were correctly classified as belonging to zero so that's correct and the same thing here 201 cases were classified correctly as belonging to one so that's how we read them so another thing that you might notice is the asymmetry so ones are less than the zeros and the total is actually a thousand cases but you can see here almost 200 and tw so 226 belonging to one versus only um, and the rest are belonging to zero so this is uh, what we call it asymmetry so more are belonging to zeros than ones so the naive rule is so from its name classifies all records as belonging to the majority or to the most prevalent class so in this case can you guess what is the naive rule rule the naive rule says here is that all classes are belonging to zero class that's basically the naive rule because it is the most prevalent class so it is usually used as a benchmark and let's look now to the error rate so now we have this confusion matrix and it shows us the misclassifications now we can easily calculate what is our overall error rate so ever uh, the error rate basically is the, the number of cases that we misclassified or our prediction model misclassified so you can see here the error rate is 25 plus 85 those are the misclassification divided by the total number of cases in this case actually 3000 cases I earlier I said maybe 20 2000 so they are 3000 so what is our overall error rate is basically 3.667 percent 
So let's say that we want to read it in a positive tone or attitude. Instead of saying concentrating on the error rate, let's concentrate on the accuracy rate. So the accuracy rate is 96, which is 1 minus 3 uh, or 0 0.0367 uh, gives us uh, 96.33 percent. So you got the idea. <coughs> So there is also a term called cutoff for classification. So when we are using Excel Miner, we will be given an option to select what is the cutoff that we want to select for our classification. So by default, we are encouraged and we should always select cutoff value of 0 0.05. I mean 0 0.5 means 50%. So how do we do that? First, we look at or the, the data mining algorithms basically classify via two-step process. The first step that the data mining algorithms do is that they compute the probability of belonging to class 1 and also uh, so the probability goes from 0 all the way to 1. So you can go from 0.1, 0.2, 0.3, all the way until point until one, and then we compare the to cut off value and classify accordingly. So what? So since we have now, a, uh, what do we say? A probability be, probability range. Then we can actually cut this this data set into two halves. One half is below 0.5 and one half above 0.5 in order to be symmetrical so default cutoff value for us we will be using 0.5 in some cases you might be asked to use different but that's the default that we should always use so if the greater or equal to 0.5 then classify as one if less than 0.5 classify as zero so that's uh, again we just want to make sure that we in order to reduce the error rate and to make sure that we are all on the same page that we will be using 0.5 as our cutoff so let's look at this example what we mean here by the cutoff so this is a data set probability of belonging to one from 0.5 uh, so it goes from z zero almost zero all the way to almost one probabilities so if we cut this and we say the cutoff is 0.5 means if it is greater or equal to 0.5 then it belongs to class one which is readmission in our example or if it is less than 0.5 then it belongs to non readmission so in this case as you can see here the actual class as 1 versus 0 in this case I will let you look at this one and see how many misclassifications we had remember our rule or cutoff we said it is 0.5 anything that is equal or greater than 0.5 we say it belongs to class 1 see this guy is not belonging to it is greater than 0.5 but it is not so this is one mis misclassification this other one also it is greater than 0.5 but it is also it is not equal uh, the actual it, it is not 1 so this is another misclassification we have what about this one it is greater than 0.5 but it's correct so now you can see that we had two misclassification what about here this one is in our cutoff we said if it is less than 0.5 then it is going to be belonging to class 0 in this case here we have a misclassification so in this case based on the 0.5 cutoff we have three misclassification from all of those 20 cases so you get the idea now so if the cutoff is 0 0.8 
if the cutoff is 0.8 that means anything that is equal or greater than 0.8 it will belong to 1 anything that is less than uh, 0.8 it is going to belong to 0 we will be able to classify correctly as 1 but we will have a lot of misclassifications for those as zeros so you will see that we will have a lot of misclassification so we will have this one as misclassification so we will have one two three four five five misclassification if we increased or we put the cutoff as point point eight while when we had the cutoff as point five we had only three misclassification so you get the idea when you are asymmetric you that means you are not symmetric then you will have more classification uh, misclassification and this is an example of um, if you increase or decrease the cutoff basically your misclassification will increase so we have six misclassification here and we have five misclassification when we put the cutoff as 25 misclassification is five the cutoff as 0.75 here is six so you get the idea so another another uh, chart or we call it the lift chart is also helps us evaluate the performance of classification and we will go over it in a little bit so in some cases that there are there are some classes are more important than others an example is the tax fraud or claim fraud in the medical field or credit fraud or default and so on so in these cases we might be interested in the in this particular class so let's look at other terms that we also want to concentrate on and we want to learn and we need to be able to to understand what they mean which tells us also the accuracy of our models so if we have class one as the important class in this case that's the readmission class so we have the percentage of class one classes correctly classified as the sensitivity so let me i provided you here with a uh, nice table to introduce what we mean here by sensitivity versus specific specificity so what when we say sensitivity means what are the number of cases that we correctly classified as the success class so in this case we have 201 cases where classified correctly as belonging to class one so what is that uh, what is in this case we can say the sensitivity is 6.7 percent so going back here sensitivity is a percentage of class one C one class correctly classified this is exactly so we correctly classified this correctly as six so the sensitivity rate is 6.7 on the other hand we have another term it's called specificity specificity in this case is defined as the percentage of C0 or class 0 that are correctly classified so this is the ones those are the ones that were correctly classified as belonging to class 0 so in this case the specificity rate is 89.63 percent so this will be a very good example for a quiz so and also not only for the quiz but this is you will be definitely using this to justify your uh, the, 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 the alternative or the your choice for the model for your project so by specifying or uh, by reporting your specificity uh, as well as the sensitivity so you get the idea now what we mean by sensitivity 
sensitivity and uh, I mean sensitivity versus sp uh, specificity so now false positive versus uh, false negative so let's look at this one so those are those are the positives right so this is the the true positive and this is the false positive so we those are 25 where uh, uh, false positives so 25 is false positive in this case we can say that 0.83 percent were false positives as for the the false negatives are these ones so we we say that for those are the the, the negatives means the class zero <laughs> the correct or the true negatives were here where we correctly classify them as belonging to the negative or to the zero class but the false ones are actually the 85 in this case the false negatives are 2.83 percent so this uh, should take care of that now we should be able to to uh, distinguish what we mean by sensitivity specificity false positives versus false negatives so you get the idea now there is also another curve curve we call it the rock curve so it is it refers to receiver operating characteristic this curve here also gives us an indication of the performance of the model that we are working with so as you can see here the x axis is one minus specificity that we just mentioned earlier and the y axis is the sensitivity so in order to see or to to know whether our model is performing well or not we can um, find that out by if we can see that this left area here the left the top left corner is covered so this is basically the red one is the baseline the baseline if or or the naive rule so if we randomly run that model this is what will be the expected uh, line so this is the random line on the other hand our model is performing well when it is above this baseline so in this case as you can see this area there is it is covering large area above the baseline so we can say that this model is performing well much better than the baseline so the greater this area above the baseline the better the model is performing so move on so there is there are two other uh, terms that we need to learn about is the lift and decile charts also they are charts that help us assess performance in terms of identifying the important class correctly so they help us actually compare performance of the data mining model to no model in the other one what we call it the pick random or the baseline so they both actually uh, are measures of the ability of our data mining model to identify the important class relative to its average prevalence so charts gives us explicit assessment of results over large so let's look at some of the examples here So in the in the left chart we compare step function to straight line but the decile from its name decile chart basically it shows us 10 groups or deciles so decile uh, means there are 10 groups and we compare that to a ratio of 1 so let's look at this example here the left chart 
So the left chart here, it we can see here we have the cumulative or the baseline in red. That's the baseline. And the blue line shows us the performance of our model in a cumulative way. So how we can interpret that is very similar to the rock. The larger the the blue line is towards the top left corner the uh, or the farther it is from the baseline the better the performance of the model is so in this case let's look at this example we can say when we have actually if we have if we just select the first 10 cases out of those 30 if we selected the first 10 cases we will be able to predict or to classify correctly nine, almost nine. So if I draw a line, almost nine uh, cases as of interest means class one. So I'll be able to co co correctly classify the nine out of the 10 cases. So this is how we can uh, interpret it. So after examining, for example, 10 cases in the x-axis, nine honors, means the, the class of interest, cl class one, have been correctly identified. So only one misclassification from the first 10. So this is basically what it tells us. Now, if we look at the decile chart for classification here, it tells us that if we just selected the first decile, so the first decile uh, of cases, we will be able to double the prediction of the, in the class of interests, which means, let's say, responses, responders. So, as you can see here, the most probable top decile in this, in this case is one model is our model is twice as likely to identify the important class in comparison to only one which is the average here so as you can see here the decile deals in terms of chunks that are uh, categorized into 10 chunks and the left actually just shows continuous cumulative results. That's kind of the difference between them. And then there is asymmetric costs. So sometimes if we, the, the cost for identifying or classifying the correct class versus misclassifying might differ. So let's look at some of the examples here. Let's look at this example. Let's say that we have we send an offer to to a thousand people with one average response rate so we send them offers for you know to come and buy or to open up an account or do or come for a uh, let's say a trial uh, you know a clinical trial and and or, or or so on but listen this example let's say that we are sending them advertising so every person who comes and responds, our profit will be ten dollars. If they don't come, then we don't. We just lose that one dollar that we sent for the mail. So in this case, we want to see if we can maximize our investment by sending to those people who are more likely will respond to our promotion to our mails. So ones are, are responses, responders, and zeros as non-responders. And naive rule. So as we remember, remember as we said what we said about naive rule, it says that or it classifies everyone as zero because the majority are non-responders. So that's the naive rule. So now let's uh, when we actually sent or we used our prediction model this is what we had our prediction model showed us that 
we were able in our prediction model we were able to cl classify eight correctly as responders and we classify 20 as wrongly or incorrectly as responders but they were not responders on the other hand here we misclassified or we incorrectly predicted two people to be non-responders but they are in actuality are responders so in other case in other words we can say that we misclassified 22 and that's what we say here our error rate is 2 plus 20 divided by a thousand gives us 2.2 percent so this is the 20 the 220 and this is the two that we misclassified those are our errors so it is higher than naive rule because the naive rule as we said here it was expecting to be one percent so you get the idea now so can you remember what we said it costs us so those are the the ones that we we said we are predicting they will respond so basically we didn't send to any of those based on the prediction model you are not you will not send any mail to those people because they are not responders and we expected them not to respond so basically nothing was spent on those guys we ignored them now we sent to those people only how many we sent to eight people and those 20 people so we went to we sent to 28 people so remember what we said everyone who responds we can make ten dollars out of each one so we made eighty dollars because everyone who responded and we correctly sent it to them and they were responders we made ten dollars profit out of each one of them so eighty dollars and how much did we spend also we spent twenty dollars for those that we misclassified as responders so in this case you can say the net profit is sixty dollars right so it makes sense so i will let you pause and think about this one and see so now this is basically what happens so those who responded or who actually responded we got $80 positive from them those who we sent to them and they were non responders so we spent actually for each one of them $1 so $20 was lost because they didn't respond so now there is another thing that another concept that we need to understand is we need to minimize cost um, or another concept we call it the opportunity costs so the opportunity cost we have learned about this in our economics courses whether it's in high school or in college but there is also an opportunity cost so let's look and identify the opportunity cost that we we identified from our model the example that we went through <clears throat> So here, we said we sent, how much? We sent eight, <coughs> we, say, we sent 28 mails. And we said every mail for those who responded cost us $1 and the, also this one cost us $1. So we, it cost us $28 here. And we misclassified two as non-responders but they are responders. That means we missed the sale to those two people so that's an opportunity cost because we could i mean if we didn't misclassify them we would have made twenty dollars out of them so that's that lost opportunity or the opportunity cost so in this case our opportunity cost is actually 48 rather than only twenty dollars so you got the idea now what we mean by opportunity cost another thing is for the left curve is it might be also sometimes negative and in this case if we have a negative slope we will need to uh, focus on the the point where we can maximize positivity so uh, in other cases we might also need to oversample 
so especially when we are working on a case or on rare cases for example let's say we are trying to identify frauds you know the frauds versus non frauds there is a you the frauds are very rare whether it is an IRS or it is claim medical claim frauds they are very rare in comparison to the non fraud so in this case we are dealing with very very rare cases but we want to in this case we need to oversample those rare cases and typically what we need is that we need to use 50% as let's say fraud and 50% as non fraud for the our training uh, data set so that's our goal in order not to be biased so we need to oversample the rare cases and those are some of the examples here where we are assuming that misclassifying zeros is five times the cost of misclassifying X so this is when we are trying to be equally uh, partition them so you can see that we have only one case here versus several cases here they are equal cost but they are not so in this case we need uh, to oversample so let's let's look at the, some of the steps here that the book provides you with oversampling procedure so if you want to oversample you have a rare case that in this case you will need to do the oversampling so the first step is to separate responders or class 1 versus class 0 you will need to separate those two classes data set and then you will randomly assign half of class 1 responder or class 1 to the training sample and you will also need to have an equal number for the class zero for that training sample that way they are symmetric 50% 50% or 50-50 so you get the idea so this is for the training sample and then for the validation whatever is left over then you can just uh, dump them into the validation sample and then add non-responders uh, to, to the validation data and then you can get the testing portion from the, 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 the validation data as well so that was all that we wanted to cover for this particular so, uh, 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 chapter so uh, in terms of classification so let's look at this one here um, again I want to emphasize that in some cases we might have three cases and one uh, or three classes class 1 class 0 and class that we can't say we don't know in, in that case you will need to have special human review somebody who is an expert in that area to decide in which class they should belong to if you can't say so in that portion we talked about the classification performance and how we evaluate classification in this portion now we will talk about evaluating predictive performance means continuous outcome variables so it is not uh, when we are comparing remember when we were working with linear regression last semester we were looking at the R square the adjusted R square or the good goodness of fit um, of the model and and all we wanted to do is that to to see the fit for that particular model on the other hand in this in analytics and in big data and uh, in this case here when we are trying to predict new data in this case we want to be able to make sure that the new data are going to be predicted correctly so we are not interested in the goodness of fit per se like the r square but we are interested in on how 
our model will perform using new data which can be the validation data or the testing data or any future data so that's what we will need to uh, evaluate we will need to evaluate the error means how deviant or how different our prediction in the new data set is from what is the actual or what what was actually uh, happened so we are basically looking at the difference between the actual outcome and the predicted outcome error so we are looking at the error and there are a couple of measures for error such as the MAE so mean absolute error deviation or the average error or that uh, so those are different types of errors that are reported to us in Excel Miner as well so we can look at them again left chart also is pre used for predictive um, models as well to calculate or to show us the predictive error so the only thing is that it is uh, the the left chart here is continuous or the y-axis is cumulative value of numeric or a continuous target value but rather than the number of cases or count of responses so as you can see here the y-axis is continuous rather than number of cases so that was all that we wanted to cover for this uh, chapter and uh, I'll see you soon.